So this past week, um, I, I was just reflecting uh, in, in, in the concept of gratitude. If you weren't, where were you? What were you doing? I mean, it was Thanksgiving week, right? Uh, just reflecting on this concept of gratitude, and this thought popped into my mind that I'm just very, very thankful for the opportunity to fight every day. And I'm not talking about fighting in the gym or anything like that. Uh, just, just thankful for the opportunity to fight. And I want to speak to us from that platform today that we need to learn to be thankful for the opportunity to fight. How many of you guys understand that most people, when they find themselves in the face of a fight, or I shouldn't say most people, many people would, would rather run than face the fight. Okay, many people, when they find themselves in a difficult circumstance, would rather run away from the difficult circumstance than face it and fight. That's just kind of human nature. There's this theory of fight or flight, right? Uh, and unless you ever face a fight, you never know whether you're a fighter or a flighter. You don't know if you're going to fight or you're going to run. But this week, I was just really reflecting on this thought that I am so thankful for the opportunity to fight. I am so grateful and so thankful for the opportunity to get up every day and just get at it. Like, like, like. When was the last time you just woke up and just were thankful and grateful that you just get to get at it? A lot of times we just get up in the morning and we're just like, oh, another day. Another day because we're bored with what we got to do today. We're bored with what we had to do yesterday. We're bored with what we got to do tomorrow. And we lose sight of this, this, this notion that we need to be thankful for the opportunity to fight. Let me give you some reasons. Like, I'm just grateful and thankful for the opportunity to fight, to get up every single day and, and fight for my marriage, fight for my wife, fight for my kids, to be able to do what I've got to do to, to, to be there for them. Like, I'm just so grateful to be able to fight for, for my church, to fight for my assignment, to fight for my dreams, to fight for God's will in my life, to fight for my business, to fight for every area. I'm just grateful and thankful for the opportunity to fight. And I really want to share on that and, and what that means this morning um, as we're in Gratitude 2023 right now. Uh, how many of us have squandered opportunities because it meant we had to fight? Think about that for a second. How many of us have missed opportunities because it meant that we had to fight for the opportunity, that we had to fight for something God intended for us to have something, but because we were not willing to fight, because we were not thankful for the opportunity, we did not fight and we missed out an opportunity. Like, I'm so thankful for the ability to fight. And as, as I was preparing this, um, God brought me back to when I was about 11 years old. So I know um, some of y'all are going to be able to relate, some of y'all won't. Uh, but how many guys know uh, an incredible historical infamous boxer by the name of Mike Tyson come on even if you're young you better know period if you know what if the person that you did not raise elbow them for being too young I don't know whatever you want to call him um but Mike Tyson is still around he's still making his presence known today but I was about 11 years old it was February of 1990 and tell me you guys how, how many of you guys remember this Mike Tyson was like indestructible. I mean, his nickname, Iron Mike Tyson, right? Like nobody could beat him. The reality is nobody had seen a fighter like him. The power that he had, the speed that he had, it's just crazy. He was just destroying everybody he went up against. And it was 1990, um, and, and he was supposed to uh, have a fight. He was the, at that time, he was the youngest heavyweight champion in the world. He had, for those of you guys who know, he had gotten the WBC belt, the WBA belt, the W, uh, uh, excuse me, the IBF belt and the WBO belt. He had gotten all the championships you can possibly get in the heavyweight division. Uh, and he was just the undisputed champion. And, and the next one he was supposed to fight was supposed to be Evander Holyfield. How many of you guys know who he is? I'm talking to all my old heads for a second. All right. Evander Holyfield was the next fight up, who was also just a complete stud, okay? But the negotiations for an early fight in the year broke down, so they were going to fight at the end of the year. And that was supposed to be like the fight of fights in, in, that, in that season. But because that fight got pushed to the end of the year, Mike Tyson had to fight early on in the year, and they set him up with a fight by the name of Buster Douglas. How many of you guys know what I'm talking about? 
Uh, they set him up with a fight by the name of a guy named Buster Douglas. So Mike Tyson was undefeated. Most of his wins coming by way of knockout. This guy, Buster Douglas, he had several losses, a couple draws. He was definitely not the guy uh, who was supposed to be a threat to Mike Tyson. He was not that guy. If you, he was supposed to be a tune-up. He was supposed to be a warm-up for Evander Holyfield. And I watched all of Mike Tyson's fight, and I remember like it was yesterday. I'm sitting in my parents' living room, and I'm watching the Mike Tyson fight, and we're going, and in the 10th round, Buster Douglas knocks down Mike Tyson for the first time in Mike Tyson's career. Not only did he knock him down, but while he was trying to get up, he kept stumbling, trying to get his mouthpiece in. wasn't happening. Got knocked out. Mike Tyson, one of the greatest boxers of all time, undefeated at the time, got knocked out in the 10th round by, I mean, his name is Buster Douglas. He's just a straight buster. He should not have won. You understand what I'm saying? Um, but he won. And he wasn't the fight that Mike Tyson was supposed to have. It was supposed to be Evander Holyfield. Later on, Evander Holyfield, Mike Tyson fights, and, 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 and I'm, I, I think Mike Tyson was mad that Buster Douglas stepped in. Maybe that's why he bit his ear later. Uh, whatever, I'll leave you guys. You guys remember he bit his ear? No? Look it up. Mike Tyson bit off Evander Holyfield's ear. Maybe because he skipped out on this fight. Whatever. But, so Buster Douglas beats Mike Tyson. Why did I say all that? That you better believe that Buster Douglas was thankful for that opportunity to fight. Because it made him a world champion. And sometimes in our lives, we lose sight of the fact that we need to be thankful for the opportunities to fight. Because the first point of my day today for you guys is we have to be thankful for the opportunity to fight. Because without the fight, there is no glory. If Buster Douglas never got that fight, he would never have become champion. And he was only champion for a short while, but he experienced the glory in the moment. Go with me to 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 through 7. If you're looking for a reason to get excited about a fight, you have to understand that without a fight, there is no glory. In all this, verse 6, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. In other words, you may have had to fight... These fights, these have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, which is of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Without the fight, there is no glory. There's a couple things that we have to understand that come to us through the fight. We have to understand that the fight, the trials that you go through, they will reveal the sincerity of your faith. If you want to know that you are really a, a sound believer, that God can do stuff in your life, that God is doing stuff in your life and through your life, you have to understand that the sincerity of your faith is only shown and only proven through the trials and through the, and, and, and through the, through the battles, through the fights. That's it. Because nobody ever fought for something that they didn't have or that they, that they already had, I should say. If you got it, you no longer have to fight for it. You might have to fight to maintain it, but you no longer have to fight for it. But the sincerity of our faith demonstrates that, that we are, oh, excuse me, the fight reveals the sincerity of our faith. And the scripture here tells us that it is, faith has a greater value than even gold. Faith is, and, and, and write this down if you're taking notes, faith is your most valuable currency. And when you talk about currency, currency is always intended for exchange. I'll get into that a little bit. Uh, but the currency of your faith is only proven when you're spending it in a fight. What's the exchange that you get when you spend your faith? What did it say to us? It says that that result, when our faith has been proven, is what? Praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. When we are no longer thankful for the opportunity of the fight, here's a reality, it's because you're no longer willing to fight. You've thrown in the towel. And, and, and I, I'm sure that many of us here have gotten weary in certain fights and certain battles that we're tired of them, like we don't want to keep going in them. 
because they're, they're, they're too tough. They seem like they're too difficult. But the reality is we're going through that process where our faith is being tested. Our faith is being proven. How do we know if we're genuine? How, how can you ever know if you're genuine unless you get into a fight? I'm talking in a faith sense. But let's talk about it in a natural sense. The example, Buster Douglas would never have known that he was championship material unless he faced a champ. You understand? He wasn't champ material for long. Don't get me wrong, okay? But every person who, 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 who is going to be a champion has to get into the fight. You have to get on the field. You have to compete. And our faith is only proven through the trials. So we have to learn to be thankful for the opportunity to fight because without the fight, there is no glory. I'm, I'm also thankful for the opportunity to fight because I understand that it is God who strengthens me for every battle. How many of you guys can get excited about the fact that God will partner up with you so that you can fight the battles that you have to fight? Like, that excites me to know that God has a plan for me, that plan is good, and that he wants me to fight these battles, not only so that my faith can be shown true, but that I can share in the glory that he is intended to have through me. Psalm 18, 32 to 35. This is the concept of that it is God who strengthens me for every battle. Psalm 18, 32 to 35. It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. Look how he does that. Look how he arms you. Look how he strengthens you. Look how he keeps your way secure. He makes your feet, or he makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He causes me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze you make your saving help my shield and your right hand sustains me. Your help has made me great. In this verse, there's so much to unpack. He says he prepares us for the battle. What's the reality? We've seen it before. We've read it before in Matthew chapter 6, 34. He says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Why? For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has troubles of its own. How many guys understand that and say Amen. Because they have them. Each day you wake up, you're going to have your trouble. But each day when you wake up, you have to settle into the gratitude and the thankfulness that is God who strengthens you for those battles. What does he want to get out of the battle? He wants your faith to be solidified. He wants it to be shown, to be proven, to be tested so that you can be strengthened. And while you're being strengthened and while your faith is being proven, he is strengthening you in the process. Like he doesn't just throw you out there to fight. He prepared you for the fight. That's good news. Like, he didn't just put you out there to die. <laughs> like, he put you out there to win. How did he do that? He gives us a couple things. Okay, that strength and security that come through us because he makes us. What does he make us first? He makes us to have feet like the feet of a deer. Have you ever watched a National Geographic special where, where something is hunting the deer? The lion or other type of predator? The second that that deer finds out they're being hunted, what do they do? They're gone. They're out. They are as nimble as nimble can be, as fast as fast can be. Why? Because the lion's fighting for a meal. The deer's fighting for its life. They're out. They're gone. And, and, and when he says here that he makes my feet like the feet of a deer as he's preparing me for the fight, one of the things you have to understand is God will make you nimble. He will make you able to pivot in a moment's notice. Things aren't going well. He'll be able to turn, to make you turn, to be able to get things on the right direction if you understand it's him who's strengthening you. Are you hearing me? Like when things are falling down, he'll make you to be able to pivot. He gives you feet like a deer. You can run faster. You can run harder. You can change on a dime when you understand it's God who is strengthening you. The next thing he says is that he makes us to stand on heights. <laughs> How many Star Wars fans, or, or not Star Wars, um, oh my gosh. No, it is Star Wars, sorry. Luke Skywalker, Star Wars, sorry. The originals, right? But, but, like, how, how many guys remember the scene when, when Anakin, before he became Darth Vader, was fighting with Obi-Wan Kenobi, and what happened? Obi-Wan Kenobi had the high ground, right? And he was like, yo, bro, don't do this. 
you're going to lose. I've won. Because anybody who understands military strategy, you want to have high ground. You never want to be on the bottom looking up. Yes or no? Like you have to, high ground is the strategy. You want to be fighting from top. You don't want to be fighting from down. And in, in that movie, Obi-Wan Kenobi is like, listen, bro, don't do it. It's going to end up bad. And it ended up really bad for him. Like, what did he lose his legs and his arms or something? He lost, like, everything, right? Like his, his arm, I think he also lost his legs. He lost everything. He was a hot mess, right? And then he became Darth Vader. His life turned all kinds of dark, and it all went downhill, right? And it was all because he had low ground. What does he make us to do? Look at him, verse 33. He causes me to stand on the heights. If you're going to be in a battle, God will place you on high ground. He will place you in a position to fight from. You may say, but pastor, it doesn't seem like I'm on high ground. It's because you're looking with your natural eyes. God has already placed you in a position from which to fight. You have to understand that God has strengthened you. In every struggle, outward or inward, you have the high ground because you have God on your side. Verse 34, he trains my hands for battle. Oh, he's training us to do what we've got to do if we are looking to him for that training. He shields us and sustains us. And his help has made me great. Why, why can I be thankful for the fight? Not only is it because there is no glory without a battle. I also have to be thankful for the opportunity to fight because I, I understand that it's also a God, an opportunity for God to strengthen me. Because God's desire is to strengthen me. God's desire is to position me, to put me on high ground, to be able to win the fights. What you don't understand is you have the high ground in him. You understand? You have the high ground in him. You have the place from which to fight because he has placed you there. This is a promise of God. It's in Psalm 18. I just read it to you. We got to start knowing that he's placed us on the high ground and stop thinking that, oh, everything's, what was me? What was me? I'm down here. I can't. No, no, no. His promise is that he's placed you in high ground. I'm thankful that he strengthens me. I'm also thankful for the opportunity because not only is my, the sincerity of my faith proven, not only is there, is there um, no glory without the battle, not only is it an opportunity for me to uh, be strengthened by my God, but it's an opportunity, point number three, that I demonstrate my gratitude by taking full advantage of every opportunity. I can demonstrate my thankfulness, my gratitude by taking full advantage of every opportunity. We get the opportunity to show God that we're grateful by taking advantage of every opportunity. I'm thankful for the opportunities to fight because it's an opportunity where I can show to God that I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the opportunity to be able to get up and fight for my kids every day because it's my opportunity to show God that I'm thankful for the kids that he's blessed me with. Does that make sense? And as parents, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's not just to fight for your kids, it's to fight with your kids, <laughs> okay? And I'm thankful for that opportunity as well. Y'all can look at me, it's okay, all right? I'm thankful for that opportunity. Danny, help me in the back there. And we need to learn to take advantage of every opportunity. Ephesians chapter 5, 15 to 20, reading out of the New King James Version, says the following. It says, see then... That you walk circumspectly, that you walk carefully, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit of God speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody of your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always. Giving thanks when? Always. For what? All things. Who do we give thanks to? To God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Fun fact. And, and try to prove me wrong. I'm happy to be proven wrong, but I don't think you can prove me wrong. Jesus never said thank you to anybody in all of scripture. 
He never said, thank you, Paul, for being Paul. He never said, thank you, Peter, for being Peter, upon whom the, the, the rock that the church is going to be built. He, he never said, thank you, to, to Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. He never said, thank you, to any of those people. He said, thank you often, but you know who he said thanks to? God. Always. Always. He was leaving for us an example that to him be all the glory. You understand? He never gave thanks to man. He always gave thanks to God. He partnered with, with men and, and, and women. And he did work in the ministry for the kingdom. But he only gave thanks to God. He was leaving for us an example that all the glory belongs to him. That all the thanks goes to him. And he said here, he gives thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. But there's something we have to understand here. Again, we demonstrate our thankfulness. If you are thankful to God, you have to demonstrate it by taking full advantage of every opportunity. The verse here says that we redeem the time because the days are evil. Let's understand something about time. And I, and I told you earlier that, that faith is the most valuable currency you have. Why? Because faith lasts until eternity. And the exchange of faith, when you give faith, you get back praise, glory, and honor. We just read that. Okay? There's an exchange of faith. It is the most valuable currency. But oftentimes we get caught up in, in the fact that, you know, uh, money is so important and we think money is such an important currency. What is the most, what is the second most valuable currency that you have in your life? Shout out answers. Faith is the first most valuable currency because it lasts into eternity. What is the second most valuable currency? Love. What else? What? Health. Somebody said it time think about this for a second God tells us to redeem the time why is time the second most valuable currency you guys may have seen this on social media I've seen it a couple times and it's an important lesson if I told you I'm going to give you 10 million dollars today how many guys would like down where do I pick it up how many guys would accept 10 million dollars if I had 10 million dollars to give you today right you don't you'd all accept it right now, what if I told you that the only condition for you receiving that $10 million was that you would not live past the end of the week? How many guys would accept the $10 million at that time? Nobody. See, the money is not important in time. Time is not money. We've had that phrase. Time is not money. Because none of us would exchange our time on this earth for money. Your time on this earth is much more valuable than money. It is the second most valuable currency that you have. The problem is many of us will waste time. And when we waste time, it is a demonstration that we are not thankful for the opportunities that we've been given. The scripture says here that we have to redeem time. What does, what does the word redeem mean? It means to take advantage of the opportunity. It means to take it back in such a way that you're paying something for it. When Jesus died on the cross, what did he do? He redeemed our lives. He gave his life to take us back from the price so what do we have to do we can't let time slip away if you're grateful and you want to thank be thankful for the opportunities that God has given you do not let time slip away he says because the days are evil you guys know there are too many opportunities to fall into wickedness yes or no there's too many opportunities to fall into it. You got to take it back. Have you ever felt, and I know this is a rhetorical question, but have you ever felt that just things are just slipping out of your hands? Like time is just going by. Guys, do you realize it will be December next week? Where did 2023 go? And the goals that were at the beginning of 2023, how did those go? How many guys got still things on your list? You're like, yeah, let me just modify this real quick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you're at the end of the year. It was supposed to be 20 pounds. I'm good with two. Like, let's just cut off to zero. Yes or no? All right? I'm, it was supposed to save an extra $1,000 in your savings. I'm good with an extra $10. Let's cut off two zeros. All right? Time flies by, guys. The opportunities slip away from us. The word here that where it says the days are evil it's this word 
paneros. What it means is full of labors, annoyances, and hardships. That's what the days are full of. The times are full of annoyances, labors, and hardships. So what do you have to do? You have to take them back. You have to redeem them. How do you redeem them? Three things on how you take advantage of every opportunity. And with this, I close. You have to redeem them. Write this down. You have to walk in wisdom. You have to walk in light. And you have to walk in love. In Ephesians chapter 5, where we just read that you have to redeem the times because the times are evil, he tells us in verse 15 to 17, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. If you want to walk in wisdom, you've got to learn what God's will is for your life. It's revealed to us in Scripture. You've got to look it up. You've got to work wisdom. And, and so what happens when we get the knowledge of what God's will is, then we have to apply it. The word wisdom, the modern day translation for us is skills. You have to take what you've learned from God and timely apply them. It does you no good to know what God says about a matter and not use them in your life. It does you no good. You want to redeem time? You want to get back what seems to be slipping out of your hands? Start using the skills that God is putting in you. Start acting wisely. Stop acting like a fool. The next thing I said, walk in light. Ephesians chapter 5, right there, the same chapter. I encourage you, read the whole thing. Verses 8 through 9. For you once, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Therefore, walk as children of light. For the, the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And you walk out as children of light, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. What does it mean to walk out in light? Here, read the rest of Ephesians chapter 5. Walking out in light means stop walking out in sin. Period. 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 You want to redeem the time? How much time have you lost because you've fallen into sinful nature or sinful practices? We're all guilty of this. We're all guilty of this. Walk as children of light. And then lastly, walk in love. Same at the beginning of Ephesians 5, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and do what? Walk in love. Ephesians 5, verse 1 and 2. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. This verse tells us that if we're going to redeem the time, if we're going to be demonstrating that we're grateful to God, we need to walk it wisely, walk in light, and walk in love. How do we walk in love? Imitate God. The greatest example of love that God shared with us, and, and we know this because we share on this often, is the fact that he gave Jesus Christ up on the cross for you and I. And if there's one thing we need to always, 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 always reflect and remember, is just how significant that sacrifice was. We cannot take it for granted. And when we, when we learn that, that our gratitude or, or that if we are thankful for the fight, we're thankful for the opportunity, then we need to redeem the opportunity if for nothing else, because Jesus gave his life for us. Jesus gave us the opportunity to fight. And I'm thankful for that. And I want you guys to be thankful for that as well. To be grateful for the opportunities you have to fight. We would have nothing to fight for if it wasn't for what Jesus did on the cross for us because everything that we would be living would be living in vain. 
we got families to fight for. We've got souls to fight for. We've got God's plans to fight for. Amen? Go to stand to your feet and we'll close out. I want to ask you guys a sincere question. Whether you're online or in-house. Is there an area in your life that you've given up the fight? Is there an area in your life where you just say, you know what? I'm done fighting. You stop fighting because you've lost sight of the fact that you need to be thankful for the opportunity to fight. You've thrown in a towel. I want to encourage you today to take back that, that, that spirit of gratitude and, and, and thankfulness as you reflect today to know that we need to be thankful for the opportunity to fight. You got to take back the time. Don't let it slip away. How do, you, how do you take back the time? Start walking wisely. Start walking in light as a child of God and start walking in love. If you've been slacking in any one of those areas, if you've been acting a fool, stop acting like a fool. Start walking wisely. If you've not been walking in light, meaning you've been walking in darkness, you've been walking in sin, guys, you're losing time. You're wasting time. And if you've been walking anything other than a demonstration of God's love to those around you, start loving on those around you. Start with those in your household. Just like, like forgive somebody who needs to be forgiven. Don't hold on to it. What do you gain? Nothing. We will waste a whole day for five minutes of a bad argument. We're letting time slip away. Guys, we, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. At, at what point, at what point did we get so arrogant to believe that we are guaranteed tomorrow? At what point did we become our own gods to think that we set the days of our lives? That we just have the right to waste what we live out. I don't know about you guys, but I don't see myself having that luxury to waste what God has given me. And I've had to repent often from those times where I've not given him all my time. And I'm not saying just all your time in prayer and all your time. No, I'm, I'm talking about walking in light. Right? Walking in wisdom and walking in love. That's how we're supposed to walk. I've had to repent of that. Father, I pray right now that you would help us. That you would help us, Lord, to walk in a way that you deemed for us to walk. That we can take advantage of every opportunity. That we can redeem the time. Get it back, Lord. Lord, for everybody who who feels like the time is slipping by, Lord, I pray right now that you would help them to redeem it in Jesus' name. That we would learn to walk in light, walk in wisdom, and walk in love today, Lord. That we would be thankful for the opportunity to fight, that we would understand that there is no glory without a battle. That we would understand that you are the one who strengthens us for every battle. And that we demonstrate our gratitude by taking advantage of each and every one of those battles. I want to speak to you for a moment. If you've never given your life to Jesus, I know where most of us are in-house. But if you've not given your life to Jesus, if you're in-house or online, I want to invite you guys to do that today. The, the way we walk in love is by following the example of God who said that he sent Jesus Christ who so loved us that he died on the cross and gave his life. And he tells us that if we should believe in him, he would receive us and he would forgive us and we would have eternal life that we would not perish. So right now, if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, I'm going to repeat a prayer where I believe in my heart that Jesus is the Son of God. 
that he died on the cross and he paid the price for my sins because there was a price for the consequences of my actions and he paid them and once the debt is paid there's nothing left to be paid so today I receive him if you want to receive him as your Lord and Savior today I want you to go ahead and repeat this prayer today after me if you've done it before you might encourage somebody so go ahead and repeat after me just say something like this say thank you Father <laughs> for sending your son Jesus to die on a cross and pay the price for my sins. Today, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Father, today, right now, I pray that everybody who said that simple prayer of faith, that you would fill their hearts with your love, Lord, that they would know that you are very, very real and that you care for them today. I thank you, Lord, for your love, for your protection. I thank you, Lord, that you would strengthen them right now in Jesus' name. In their battle right now, that you would strengthen them, Lord, in Jesus' name. If you gave your life today, in-house or online, we want to know about it after the service, just let us know because we want to walk this life of faith out with you.